Welcome back students, after a short break, due to some technical errors, I can't upload my videos regularly. So let us start revising our portions hereafter regularly and kindly share and subscribe and put your likes and comments. Keep on watching. In today's session, we will deal with the topic body fluids. In, uh, we will discuss about the blood in detail. So how will you define blood? So blood is defined as a fluid connective tissue. So in which all the cells that are uh, called as formed element, they are suspended in a liquid portion that is called as plasma. So blood is defined as a fluid connective tissue. So it is a body fluid present in uh, humans and uh, also other animals, organisms etc. And they will deliver the necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and they transport the metabolic waste products away from the cell. And do you know the color of our blood? and how much volume it is. So we are having 4 to 6 liters of blood circulating in our body. So it is of two types namely pure blood and impure blood. Pure blood means it is rich in oxygen and uh, they are always uh, carried by arteries. And uh, the impure blood means it is rich in carbon dioxide and it is always carried by veins. And only one exception is that pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein they will uh, do it in reverse. So pulmonary arteries, they will carry the impure blood whereas the pulmonary vein, it carries the pure blood. So the oxygen rich blood is called as oxygenated blood and the carbon dioxide rich blood is called as deoxygenated blood. And uh, if you come to the color of our blood, what is the color of our blood? It is red because we are having hemoglobin inside our RBC. So the hemoglobin is nothing but it is a respiratory pigment and uh, due to the hemochrome that is the protein present in our blood, uh, it is uh, giving a red color to the uh, blood. And uh, do you know the other colors of blood? So we are also having uh, in many lower organisms, the blood is blue in color and uh, sometimes green in color and uh, in uh, insects and all, uh, they will be in white in color. So that is due to the pigments present in our blood. So if you take uh, uh, in case of mollusk that is cephalopods and gastropods, many arthropods, so for example horseshoe crabs, the blood is blue in color because it contains the copper containing protein that is hemocyanin. Uh, so due to that copper it is giving a blue color. Uh, and then uh, in another case that is in case of annelid worms, the marine polychaetes, they are uh, ha having a green color blood. It is due to the presence of chlorocreorin. So it transport oxygen. So it is a uh, green in color. And uh, in many invertebrates, marine in invertebrates, uh, heme erythrin is present. So it is also a pigment similar to hemoglobin and uh, hemovanadin. So it is present in uh, case of sea squids and uh, these proteins based on vanadium uh, it acts as the oxygen carrier for those uh, species. So the blood is different colors due to the different types of uh, pigment present in it. So in this diagram you can see the blood vessel so all the composition of blood that is red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, plasma, everything is uh, present inside our, uh, flowing inside our uh, blood vessels. So the blood vessels are nothing but arteries and veins. So le let us see about the composition of blood in detail. So this diagram or image, it can show the presence of uh, composition of blood in detail. So here our body, it consists of about 8% uh, of blood and uh, the other fluids and tissues it comprises of about 92% in our total body weight and uh, if you take the 8% of blood uh, it is called as whole blood. Whole blood means both the uh, cells uh, as well as the biochemical constituent. So in that uh, if you take uh, blood in a test tube after centrifuging it you can see a yellow color layer that is separated uh, and it is uh, seen at the above the level of the formed elements. So it, the plasma, the plasma it is about 55% um, 
plasma will be present and 45% will be of formed elements. So, you can easily observe after centrifuging. Uh, so, there will be a white color layer that is called as buffy coat. It is due to the uh, WBC. So, all the red color, the formed elements are uh, um, mainly due to the RBC cell. So, in this 55% of plasma, we are having 7% of proteins and 92% is only of water and other solutes 1% are dissolved in this plasma portion. So, all the biochemical constituents like carbohydrate, protein, vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, pigments, gases, everything will be present in this plasma portion. So, the plasma is the yellow color liquid, liquid portion of the blood. So, uh, here uh, the important proteins are given. So, out of the 7 percentage of proteins, the major proteins present in our plasma are the albumins, globulins, fibrinogen and prothrombin. So, the, the normal range is given here. Usually in all individuals, albumin will be present uh, in high level when compared to globulin. And in case of liver disorders, if there is any damage to the liver, the ratio gets reversed. That is termed as A by G ratio. So, the globulin will be high in case of liver disorders. And this fibrinogen and prothrombin, they are the important proteins. Uh, they are uh, the plasma proteins involved in the clotting of blood. So, that is also important and the other solutes referred as the ions that is sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate etc. And the nutrients absorbed from the food, the waste product from the metabolism like urea, creatinine and um, other metabolic waste products, gases, regulatory substances all are uh, present in this plasma only. And if you take the formed elements, what are formed elements? The RBC, WBC and platelets. So, RBC means red blood corpuscles, it is otherwise called as erythrocytes and WBC means white blood corpuscles, it is termed as leukocytes and thrombocytes means platelets. So, all these three elements they are called as formed elements and they are formed from the reticuloendothelial system. So, um, uh, reticuloendothelial system, what is uh, reticuloendothelial system? RES. So, it comprises the three glands, the namely liver, spleen and bone marrow. So, these three uh, organs are said to be the reticuloendothelial system and the blood is formed. All the formed elements are formed from here only. And the normal ranges uh, are also mentioned here. So, RBC, it, uh, it is about 4.2 to 6 million. Whereas, WBC, uh, it is about 5,000 to 10,000 cells uh, per cubic millimeter and platelets, we are having 1 to 3 lakh. And in case of WBC, we are having 5 different cells, namely, Neutrophil, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. So, you can refer the normal range here. So, you can see the cells here. The first one is erythrocytes. So, it is biconcave in shape. And uh, the next one is uh, eosinophil. The second diagram is eosinophil. It is having two nuclear lobes. And this one, first diagram is basophil. And third here, uh, the three lobes, it is of neutrophil. And uh, these three cells, eosinophil, basophil and neutrophil, they are having granules and uh, they are said to be granulocytes. And there are two cells, namely monocyte and lymphocyte. In monocyte, you are having a kidney shaped nuclear lobe and in lymphocyte, it is uh, having a large nucleus. So, they are having uh, no granules. So, they are said to be a granulocyte. So, these are the five types of WBC. And the next one is functions of blood. So, the blood uh, has to supply the nutrients uh, to the tissues and it involves in the respiratory function that is it uh, carries oxygen to the tissues and carries carbon dioxide to the lung. And uh, all the excretory products, it, uh, it is excreted towards the kidney and uh, it also helps in the transport of hormones, enzymes, etc. It regulates water balance, acid base balance and it regulates the body temperature and it... Uh, uh, involves in storage function. So, defensive function means it, uh, it is having, uh, it is producing the antibodies namely IgG, A, M, D, E all the antibodies are present in our uh, blood only and uh, albumin, globulin etc are stored here. So, it involves the storage function. So, these are the functions of the blood. So, Carl Landsteiner. So, this image Carl Landsteiner. So, he is the person who uh, got Nobel Prize for the invention of our blood group system.
so the landsteiner he uh, he is the founder of the blood group and in our uh, country we are following the abo blood group system and the rh blood group system so we are uh, having um, a b a b and o and uh, how this blood group is formed mean in the rbc cell surface we are having some antigen so if the cell surface is having a antigen mean they belong to a group if the cell surface is having b antigen mean they uh, they belongs to b group and if the person is having both the antigen a and b antigen present on the rbc cell surface mean they belong to ab group and if there is no antigen means they are termed as o group so what happens always the opposite antibodies will be present for each antigen so if the person is having a antigen means antibody b will be present so for b group uh, person antibody a will present why because if you are having the same antigen and same antibody for example antigen a and antibody a is present in a same person means they will uh, agglutinate each other and uh, they will lyse so only we are having opposite uh, antibody so that is the reason for uh, here so a antigen a group person will have antibody b and b group person will have antibody a and ab group they won't have any antibodies because they are having both the antigens and uh, in o group they are having no antigen so they are having both the antibody so this is the reason for why uh, ab group persons are called as universal recipients because uh, they are having no antibodies and uh, universal donors o group is termed as universal donor because they are uh, having no antigen so this is about the blood group and rh typing means in rhesus monkey they found a new antigen that is antigen d so it is uh, similarly found in humans also and uh, all the persons who are uh, having the antigen d similar to that of uh, rhesus monkey they are termed as rh positive so if we have the antigen d we are termed as rh positive and those individuals who are not having the antigen d they are termed as rh negative so the rh factor is nothing but antigen d so if antigen d is present means they are said to be positive and if there is no antigen d d means they are said to be rh negative and this is one important uh, condition called as erythroblastosis fetalis so it is a severe medical condition it results from the incompatibility between the pregnant woman and the fetus so suppose uh, if a rh negative mother is impregnated with an rh positive father the result can be uh, a formation of rh positive baby so the baby's rh antigen will be perceived as foreign invader so the mother's blood cells uh, they will attack the baby's uh, antibodies as a protective mechanism so if the mother is pregnant with the her first baby or its incompatibility is uh, it is not a concern but the same mother when the second baby is uh, uh, rh positive so the mother's body will create the antibodies against the rh factor of the second rh positive uh, baby so here uh, this is what that rh incompatibility occurs and it is a preventable condition so uh, a medication called rh immunoglobulin also known as rho gam gam so it can help the prevent uh, the rh sensitization so you can see in the diagram so the first born baby if it is of rh positive uh, the rh antigens will be developed with, which will affect the second rh positive fetus and the next one is blood clotting mechanism so in case of any uh, wounding occurs the tissues and platelets at the site of the wound they degenerate and form the enzyme called thromboplastin in the presence of thromboplastin the prothrombin will be converted into thrombin and uh, the thrombin in the presence of thrombin fibrinogen is converted into fibrin this is the formation of clot and for this we are having 13 bleeding factors and in the presence of calcium and vitamin k uh, the blood will clot thus the blood coagulation it is in cascade process and many tissue factors and calcium ion etc are needed for this mechanism uh, so in the next session we will see about the circulatory system in detail thanks for watching
and keep on watching for the next chapters thank you once again